Oh, hell. All right, that didn't work because this ear is uh, breaking right there. I guess I've got to put it under here and ruin those to make this work. So this is a seal and a seal protector right here. So that's not really anything solid, but I guess I'm gonna have to sacrifice that. Keep putting some pressure on it and see what happens here. <sighs> Things are not moving. I may need to find someone with a bigger press. Uh, I'm just going to leave that there for a bit and maybe just with it sitting there with some pressure on it, um, it might break free. I'll see. I guess I could come and heat, heat this up, but it's going to take a lot of heat and I don't know if I have the right tip to get as much heat on there as I need to to break that free. I do know a place that has a larger press that I could take it to if I need to, but I'm just going to let it sit there for a while and see what happens. This is only a 12-ton uh, press here. I, uh, these things these things can hurt you, so you got to be careful around them. When something does go, you know, something could shatter here. I don't want to hit that too much because that could break. Uh, but yeah, when it does give, something could shatter and hurt somebody. So I'm I'm a little bit leery of these presses, and I try to respect them. Well, I finally have gotten around to this bush hog in this shaft. Uh, I had this shaft sitting in my shop on my press for a week or two. Kept soaking it with PB blaster. Uh, left it on the press. I've only got a small press. Uh, what is it? Eight or ten ton or so I seem to be just putting out fires this morning or maybe I'm creating fires. I don't know. I've I've had some issues with our utility company and the flags that we've put on the poles I'm going back and forth with them now. It seems to be an issue even though we had gotten permission from an employee at the utility company now it's an issue I got a phone call from my bank you may have seen in the video I posted a couple days ago where I was talking and the phone rang and I said oh this is from West Virginia um, so I didn't take the call didn't return the call uh, that person called me this morning from um, my bank but it's from their from their corporate office in another state and the woman was very vague about what she wanted, so I wouldn't give her any information over the phone. And so I've called my local branch to try to see what the issue is. So they're on top of it trying to figure out what this person wanted from the corporate branch. I just hate creating and putting out fires. Okay, let's get back to this project. I finally... Uh, got this shaft removed. I wasn't able to do it myself after leaving this in my press for a week or so, spraying it with WD-40. Finally, I took it to um, another guy with a press. Uh, it was a suggestion given to me by my welder. Uh, took it up to him. He had a 60-ton press. He put it in there. It just wasn't moving. So this bolt screws into the end of the shaft. The shaft was up in there, the bolt through here. So we were just pressing down on this bolt to shove the shaft out. So he, he put it in his 60 ton press and didn't get any movement from it. So he, he stopped, he said, I suggest you take it back to your welder, have him heat it up and try to press it out from there. Well, my, my welder's press was out of operation. He's got a, the seal on it that he needs to replace and I guess he replaced the seal but it's still leaking anyhow I took it back to him so he uh, he started heating this up uh, real nicely his son was there 
got the big sledgehammer out and started beating down on this we had it in a good solid position uh, with pressure uh, on this started beating down through there finally we got enough heat on it and enough beating on it that that thing came out of there finally wow that was a lot of work so now I can go ahead and order the parts that I need and uh, get this thing put back together so hopefully next week I'll get that put back together get the parts ordered uh, this week in the meantime it's uh, back on the sprayer I go there's not a cloud in the sky today so I think we'll be good as far as getting this chemical on I've got some flex star up there I've got a I've just I, I need to put something else out here besides glyphosate so I've got some flex star there I'm gonna try on a couple of fields and see how that goes uh, so let's get this spraying done I've got what have I got 90 to 100 acres probably I want to spray today and I don't know if I'm gonna to spray tomorrow I've got to take my daughter to the airport tomorrow she's going on a two-week European vacation two two and a half week uh, European vacation uh, she had an opportunity presented to her about a month ago and so she has taken that opportunity and um, taken, I'm taking her to the airport tomorrow she's uh, flying into Amsterdam actually it will be Thursday morning but overnight flight leaving tomorrow evening flying into Amsterdam and uh, then enjoying her two-week vacation from there so I'll give you a little more information about that probably in another video okay let's uh, get these chemicals unloaded I've got to hook the sprayer up and get everything loaded and start getting these weeds uh, de demolished demolished yes that's what I want to do whoa 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 what That tractor sitting crooked. What the hell? I think I got a flat tire. What the hell? Another damn fire I need to put out. Whoa. Son of a you know what? That's not good at all. Not at all. Hmm. I guess I need to put some air in it and see how long it stays up. My arm got tired of holding the truck on the valve stem, but I've got some air in it. Enough that it's not sitting down on the rim, although it was not completely flat. So I'll keep an eye on this in the meantime. Uh, let me go hook on to the sprayer. This is more important. Okay, you probably can't see what I'm doing. So there's two connections I need to make with the sprayer as far as the electronics go. One is uh, to the monitor itself. So this wiring harness is coming from the sprayer. I'm putting this to the monitor. Well, in order to get power to the monitor, I need to plug it into the power of the tractor. This is sort of a universal power supply for tractors. It's a three-prong uh, supply here. And 
my supply is right here plug it in right there and that's simple so now I should have power here there we go I think I need to tighten tighten my bolt up there my monitor is a little loose okay we've got power so let's go put some water in the sprayer well let me read the label on this Flexstar GT 3.5 do not overuse technology hmm that can be said for so many things can it formulated with isolink technology that minimizes the need for additional spray adjuvants under certain conditions burn down and post emerge activity may be improved by adding one or more of the following ammonium sulfate uh, urea ammonium nitrate crap oil concentrate or non-ionic surfactant <clears throat> okay I think I have the bank issue straightened out all right 15 to 20 gallons maximum of 5.3 pints so that's uh, two and uh, three quarter quarts I guess oh rotation field corn I've got to wait 10 months hmm today's July August September October November December January February March April May oh wow I've got to watch that didn't realize we had a rotation restriction oh I can only apply every other year wow didn't know that that's interesting all right there we go and I did I read somewhere I think it's rain fast in one hour I don't see it now but I do remember seeing it somewhere that this is rain fast in one hour meaning as long as it is on the plant at least an hour then it should do its job at least an hour before it rains okay all right let's do it hey these soybeans look pretty darn good if I have to say so if I had to give them a rating of uh, 1 to 10 I'd give them an 8 so on Sunday we got anywhere from two tenths to uh, half an inch of rain uh, at the farm I had two tenths uh, a cousin of mine that lives uh, almost straight ahead about three quarters of a mile he got a half inch I had three tents at my house I've got another friend uh, about two and a half miles from here he had uh, six tents I believe so anywhere from two tenths of an inch of rain to six tenths of an inch in this area so that was a decent rain fell nicely but we need more of it. I think I've showed you this before, but this uh, bare spot here is from the tides when we have flooding events. Uh, just on the other side of the, the weeds here is the creek. And so when we have flooding events, that tide rises and that salt water will come up here and you can see the soybeans uh, just don't make it but yet the grass right there uh, that survives but then that other field you can see the, the brown part there there's about 15 feet that uh, this tide rises up into that field and kills those soybeans but uh, that grass is immune to that salt water I guess I need to um, find some salt water tolerant soybeans. Hmm. Is there a big need for those? I'm sure I'm not the only person that has uh, some of this ground that gets flooded sometimes with salt water. I'll have to do some research. Maybe I can uh, develop my own soybeans and uh, put a patent on them and become rich and famous. Yeah, okay. Time for 
before a candy bar review. So this is the male version of the non-woke Jeremy's chocolate bar. This is the he him with nuts. beans don't look quite as good as the ones I sprayed uh, first. Still not bad looking, but I shouldn't have to respray these. And these are those uh, some of those soybeans that I sprayed, and then within a couple of hours, we got some rain on it. And initially, I said, "Hey, I think I got lucky, and all is good. The chemical was on here long enough." But no, apparently I didn't, because this is about two weeks later. And I've got some escapes with Morning Glory and Ragweed, a few other small weeds coming up. And I just should not have to be spraying these again so soon. But I'm I'm kind of certain now that the chemical that I initially put on just wasn't on here long enough. And so uh, here I am respraying again. Now, we're getting ready uh, to get into a different type of soybean, so you can almost see the line here. The ones on this side, not quite as green. The ones on the other side, a little bit greener. So those are enlist beans. These are just uh, Roundup Ready or glyphos glyphosate tolerant soybeans. All along, the ones that I'm in now have looked a whole lot better, just a little bit taller. Uh, than the enlist beans. I just haven't been real pleased with how those enlist beans have been growing. So I'm not spraying enlist today. I am spraying the Flex Star and I'm just going to put it on all of these uh, soybeans. So I, I've already sprayed enlist over there and then the glyphosate on these. And that's what got washed off. I won't say there's a lot of difference in the weed pressure in either of these, the Enlist versus just the plain glyphosate tolerant uh, soybeans. Okay, back to my candy bar. Hey, these sunflowers are looking pretty good. They're, they're about to bloom. Blooms are coming on top of them, but he's, uh, he's got a nice, crop of sunflowers there. Well, the corn is uh, just starting to tassel. So we've got uh, temperatures in the mid 80s this week. Chance of rain again on, uh, I think it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So it does need some rain. I won't say it is hurting for it because you're not seeing any leaves curling up on it yet, but um, it's just had enough to get by. That's about all I can say. This is the field. I've been fighting the mare's tail, and I do not see any. So that is good. I guess the uh, enlist did its job because there is nothing sticking up above the soybeans and I don't see anything down in there either. I am mainly have morning glory problem right now in this field. So what I'm spraying, uh, just plain glyphosate should take care of that. I've got a little bit of uh, foxtail fall panicum on the end here. Just a few spots of that. Mainly where the water uh, the lower spots where the water could lay. Not that we've had a lot of rain this year for water delay. Okay, this is what I'm spraying for. We've got an escape here. Uh, there's there's a small mare's tail there. 
it's not going to amount to much I don't think not a lot of morning glory in this spot right here but what I got out to show you was the deer pressure that this field had oh my gosh a gypsum weed haven't seen one of those in a long time it's a good thing those have not become resistant to glyphosate uh, the deer pressure on this field is just unbelievable it's about four acres here and then on the other side of those trees I've got another uh, probably seven acres that the deer pressure is just tremendous here these beans well the battery went dead in the GoPro so now I've got the uh, Osmo pocket what was I saying talking about the deer pressure in, in these two fields here all of these soybeans that I've sprayed today have were planted relatively within three to five days of each other the first field I was spraying that I talked about that looked so good those soybeans were knee-high they were planted probably five days after these these were the first ones I planted and just the, the deer have really come out here and worked on this so I do see a little bit of mare's tail here another one there but I'm fighting the grass here but here you can see where the deer have have kind of just nibbled nibbled these off so I was watching one lonely farmer one of his videos and he talked about this product called Penergetic so I talked to my chemical dealer about it yesterday he cannot get that product but he was talking about some other products they're basically I guess like a pepper spray that keeps the deer away so I'm not sure about the Penergetic I need to probably get in touch with one lonely farmer or uh, go look up the website and see what that one is all about I guess the downfall from what my chemical dealer was telling me is that when it rains then you've got to come out here and respray again with that stuff but it's basically just a wildlife deterrent so I guess it's a smell that keeps them away uh, the chemical dealer that I deal with said it's it's expensive it can cost $15 an acre well hell that's only one or two bushels of soybeans and the deer are hurting our yields more than that so if it works it would pay for itself uh, but yeah the, the pressure out here is is just unbelievable with these deer so you you can see this one here it's you know it keeps trying to grow but they come in and bite the tops of it off and then it's got to take off and try to go again so what I am putting on with this tank mixture is um, a liquid fertilizer just to try to give these beans a boost because once these beans get knee high the deer don't seem to bother them as bad so uh, that is what my chemical dealer suggested was uh, putting a liquid uh, fertilizer in here so I've got like a, a f what did he sell me a 412 16 putting about a quart and a half to two quarts to the acre just to give these beans a boost and maybe I should have done that before now um, yeah the deer it's hey they are eating morning glories as well so you can see that morning glory right there it, it has they have been eaten at that so that's a good thing I guess if there were more morning glory out here for them to eat they would eat it but gosh just I mean look at that you can see they've bitten the stems right off of there but then on this one that's a little bit healthier no no stems really bitten off of that one damn deer if we could just shoot them and let them lay that would be the ticket wouldn't it that would be a deterrent if you shot one or two of them out here and let them lay out here that would deter the other deer would it maybe I don't know I don't think it's legal though as I'm getting away from this side of the field this is where the deer pressure is greatest so soybeans don't look as good but as I move over to this side where they don't come out as much it's a little farther away from 
their habitat habitat in their trees over here then these beans are looking better got a little better height to them uh, not as much uh, missing places here and just look a little bit healthier so yeah that's why I know it's the deer pressure got a dirty wind uh, dirty window hey that helped a little bit I don't think I have any fluid in this back window no. oh there we go hey oh yeah now I can see What about the front? I think I need a new wiper on that uh, front one. Ah, uh, there we go.